morning, everybody, and welcome to our special Science Week session today. My name's Nicola, and I'm here with Linda, and we're both librarians for Kirklees Libraries. So normally each year we would have had lots of lovely science events in our libraries, but this year has been quite different for us all, hasn't it? And we can't open our libraries at the moment because of COVID, but we can do online events instead. So we thought of some fantastic experiments that you can do at home. And Linda is going to show you this morning how to make lemon volcanoes, lava lamps, space rockets and slime. Fantastic. So uh, I'm going to get Linda onto the screen. Here we are, Linda. This is Linda. You can hear me talking, <laughs> but we can only have the camera on the experiments or my face. And I would much rather have it on the experiments. So, <laughs> Okay, I hope you thank you. I hope you managed to get all your ingredients together. Um, we did put the ingredients out on Facebook. We put them out as many times as we did a little talking head so that you could get your things ready. Um, and I want you to have I want you to by now you should have decided which experiment you want to do with us. I'm going to take you through all four, but I don't think you're going to make all four this morning. So we're going to start with one which is, uh, all, and uh, all the experiments this morning are about chemical reactions. Got to remember to keep bringing in the science because all I'm interested in is the fun, but we've got to keep bringing in the science. So the first thing we're going to make is a lemon volcano. First of all, we need our lemons. I'm going to have to get an adult to do this first bit because we need to take the lemon and we need to cut the top off. like so and we need to cut the bottom off like so and for that we need a sharp knife so we're going to have to have adults do that bit put those to one side and then we're going to stand our lemon actually i'm going to cut a little bit more off that i'll tell you why in a minute you need to cut a little bit more off so that it looks like this can you see the inside of the lemon and then because we've cut his bum off he can stand up I'm going to do two so that we've got two different colours. So we cut the top off. We cut the bottom off. And we stand him in the tray. Now, the next thing we need to do is try and get a little bit of that lemon out so that when we put our baking soda in, it will be able to mix. So for this, I'm going to use a spoon. You can use a spoon or you can use a knife. So I take my hand out the way. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. So we need to go around the lemon, around the edges with your spoon and scoop a little bit of it out if we can so that we've got somewhere for our reaction to take place. Scoop a little bit out like that and give it a good poking. So that's one. This is the other one going to go I'll try to do it this way so you can see this is the first time I've done this you see so it's all a learning curve so well with cameras anyway I've done it in libraries but not with cameras so we're going to scoop some out you can see what I'm doing and as I'm scooping it I'm squashing all that flesh inside so that I've got a nice hole get the pips out as well okay so the next thing we're going to do is put some food coloring in I just get my food colouring ready. I've got some red food colouring and some green food colouring. We just need a few drops of each. So we'll make this one we'll make green. Just a few drops into the lemon. Like that. That's our green one. Perhaps a bit more in the middle. This one we're going to use our red dye, red food colouring, sorry. Oops, that fell off. Okay, so put some red in there, like that. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to put some baking soda. See the baking soda? That's bicarbonate of soda. We're going to Take the top off. Like 
it's a new one that's why it's so stiff and you're going to need a spoon you just get a spoonful a teaspoonful like that and we're going to put it into our volcano some in the red and some on the green and as soon as we start to put it on it starts to fizz oops can you see them starting to fizz already what we're going to do is we're going to use our butter knife we're going to give it a poke to stir up the reaction poke that one too oh no i've got two colors there poke that one too can you see what happens when you poke them can you see the reaction the sun's coming out i'm going to have to go and close my curtain so that we can see can you see the bubbles green bubbles and red bubbles Now you see lemons are a type of citrus fruit. We've also got limes and oranges. They're all citrus fruits, grapefruits are citrus fruit as well. And citrus fruits are known for their sour taste. Now, if you've probably you've probably noticed this if you've ever, ever tried to eat a lemon, it's very, very sour. And that's because the flesh inside, this that we took out, these little bits of flesh. These contain a lot of citric acid. And citric acid, like any other acids, is a chemical. It has lots of hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions are what our taste buds recognise as a nasty sour taste. Acids like to get rid of their hydrogen ions, and they do this by reacting with other chemicals called bases. There, we put, we put those up so that you can see what I'm talking about. Those are the hydrogen ions. Those are in the lemon. I'm going to give him another poke. See if we can get some more bubbles. I use the other side so I don't mix the colours up. Have we got any more bubbles? Oh, yes, yeah, some more bubbles. That must be because we've got some more acid coming up to meet our baking powder. So um, they do this by having a reaction with other chemicals called the base. That contains lots of hydroxide ions. So those are different ones. When an acid and a base combine, it's called an acid-base reaction and they neutralize each other. Now baking soda is our base. There we go, baking soda is the base. And this means it contains hydroxide ions. When it meets an acid, such as our citric acid, a chemical reaction starts and the reaction neutralizes the acid and releases carbon dioxide and that's a gas the gas wants to escape the liquid it doesn't like being in there and that's what creates the bubbles and that's exactly what we've just done with our lemon volcano reaction the citric acid which is released into the lemon juice when mashed up with the fruit reacts with the baking soda then you pour it over the lemon and as soon as they both combine carbon dioxide gas is produced to create all the foamy bubbles. Once the citric acid and the baking soda have neutralized each other, the reaction stops. So eventually our volcano will stop reacting. Let's give him another poke and see if he's finished yet. Look, it's still going. Bubbles are still coming out. So we've still got some citric acid in there. Still meeting with our baking soda, releasing all the carbon dioxide bubbles. The gas is coming up through the liquid. And that's what's making our coloured foam. I think that one might have stopped. Give it another poke. Has it stopped? Is it all neutralised? I think it's all neutralised. So that's our first experiment. But you could do lots of different experiments if you want to do, want to do this one for a bit longer. You could try using a lemon instead, uh, sorry, a lime instead to see if it's better or worse than the lemon. You could try an orange to see if that's better or worse than the lemon. You could see how much baking soda to put on. If we put any more baking soda on, do you think it'll react again? Has it all done? This is why experiments are such good fun. You can do all sorts of different things to get different reactions. I think our lemon volcanoes have been neutralised. 
I'm going to go back to Nicola so that I can swap my tray and then we're going to try our second experiment. What did you think, Nicola? Fantastic. I thought they were really good volcanoes. Um, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, fascinating stuff, isn't it? So while Linda's setting up, I thought I'd share my screen with you for two minutes. Uh, there we go, so share screen. Um, and tell you a little bit about our ebooks, which are here. And we've got 246 children's science books that you can borrow for free from our ebooks. So I'll just scroll down a little bit so you can see. We've got uh, kids scientists, we've got Einstein there. We've got lots and lots of different science books you can look at. We've got the 30-minute rainy day science projects. We've got lots and lots of things about fossils, books about fossils and dinosaurs. Absolutely loads and loads of brilliant science books. So there we go. So I'll just stop sharing my screen a minute. And then I'll show you where to find all these brilliant books. They're on our Overdrive site, our ebook site, which is kirklees.overdrive.com. Um, so if you go on there and have a look at our books, um, I'd definitely recommend them. Okay, so I think Linda's nearly ready for the next experiment. And the next ones we're going to do are lava lamps. So exciting stuff. So all right then, let's get Linda back on. There we go. Right, I just had to go to my freezer to get the ice. Right, so the next thing that we're going to do is lava lamps. I've had to adjust my camera because you need to see these bottles are a bit taller, so we need to we need to see those and how they work. I might have to adjust the camera a bit, but you just have to bear with me because as I said before, it's the first time we've done all this stuff online. So lava lamps, what do we know about lava lamps? Um, lava lamps were the height of room decorations in the 60s. Uh, and I think they had a bit of resurgence, maybe 70s, 80s. They keep coming back to us. And the lamp was a really nice thing to watch. It's really calming to watch. So a few minutes after you turned it on, the lava lamp had blobs of coloured liquid floating up towards the top. And then they were drifting back down again. But it was the heat from the electric that made the... Um, the wax float up through the liquid. Now, making an actual lava lamp that you plug in would require an awful lot of effort and some very unusual surprise. But we can create a non-electric version in just a few minutes with the help of some fizzing powder called Alka-Seltzer. And um, in, this, so in this activity, we're going to make our own Alka Seltzer lava lamp. It's a mouthful. Um, and then we're going to see how changing the temperature of the ingredients would change the behaviour of the blobs of the lava lamp. So, first of all, I'm just going to alter this camera a little bit to see if we can just make it go up a little bit. See if that's a bit better. We're going to see everything that you're going to see everything out of the out of shot now. And what a messy table I've got. I was going to be so good. Right. So we need two of these lovely bottles. These bottles are um, oil bottles just from the supermarket. So um, it's just vegetable oil, sunflower oil, whatever's cheapest, really. So I've decanted it into my big jugs here so that we can show you how to do everything okay now um to each of the jars and bottles or and i must say it doesn't have to be this sort of a bottle it can be any sort of a plastic bottle so while i was upstairs i was looking around the bathroom i've got a little radox bottle up there you could use that i've got a little bottle that i've had some shower gel in you could have used that as long as it's a clear bottle so that you can see i'm going to open the tops i'm going to do two experiments so that we can have two different colours like we did with the, um, the volcanoes. So to each jar or bottle, I want you to put about two inches of water in the bottom. Mm. 
probably about the same size, perhaps a bit more in that one. We've got about two inches now. Yep. I'm just going to slow down. I'm going to try, try and remember to slow down so that you can do your experiments at the same time. So we've got there about about an inch an inch and a half in that one. Might put a bit more water in actually. Because that's where the reaction takes place in the water underneath the oil. Right, so there we go. Okay. Um, and then I want you to add about five drops of food colour in. So this one's going to be red, orange, orangey red, it says this one. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Does that look red enough? Might put some more in. And then this one is going to be blue. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to fill them about three quarters full with vegetable oil. So this is my vegetable oil that I decanted earlier. Best hold on to it. And I think I'm going to go up to just that top line. So can you see it's about so far off the top, just at the top of the lines. That's that one. I'm going to leave them to settle. Can you see what's happening? Can you see what's happening to our oil bottle? We've got oil at the top, but the water, the blue water, has stayed at the bottom. And our orange water stayed at the bottom. Lots of different bubbles in there. Lots of bubbles already. I'll just give them a minute to settle. I'm going to shut the tops down. And I'm going to make one hot and one cold. Well, when I say hot, I don't mean hot because you shouldn't play with hot water. I'm going to make it warm. So we're going to put this one, blue one, into some cold water. Just enough to make the blue water cold. I'm going to put some ice in there to make it very cold. This one, the orange one, is going to go into some warm water. Now it is a kettle, but it's not hot, it's just warm water. I'm going to see if the reactions are different when the water's cold and warm. We've put the tops on tight so that we don't have any spillages. Now while we're heating and cooling those jars, we're going to get some alka salsa tablet and we're going to cut it into quarters. Where's my knife gone from the other tray? So a grown up again for this one because it's a sharp knife. Cut it in half and then cut it in half again. So that we've just got quarters. Once the jars are warm and the jars are cold, which might take a little while, this one might warm up because it's in warm water, but this one might take a bit longer to cool down. So when you're doing your experiments, we can just wait a little bit while we're doing that. What we're going to do next is we're going to drop one of our little quarters into each of the jars. Right, 
Remember I said get a timer ready so that we could see how long they were going to take. I've got my timer on my phone. So I'm going to drop it into the hot water, well the warm one. It's going to go down to the bottom, shut it up. It's going to go down to the bottom and into the liquid. See how long it takes for the tablet to melt. You see the bubbles coming up? Our little tablet's already melted. It took about 30 seconds to melt. Melted really quickly. Let's take the cold one. Let's open the top of this one. We're going to drop our Alka-Seltzer in. Restart our timer. Drop it into the cold one. How long do you think it would take before the bubbles start coming up with that one? How long will it take to melt? The warm one melted really quickly. Blue's only just getting going. Still melting. Still melting. You see the bubble still coming up? It's there, look. It hasn't melted yet. There, there it goes up to the top that took nearly a minute what was the other one seconds so what have we found out that the one in hot water fizzes quicker and comes to the top and makes more bubbles the one that was in cold water took longer to come to the top it took about twice as long didn't it if we put our lights on here and stand our bottles over the lights. We could put some more of our, don't fall over, we're on camera. Um, there look, we're going to put some more in, so some more in that one, and some more in that one. Now I did say that we only needed a quarter for the experiment, but of course, if you want to go on making bubbles, you can put more and more Alka-Seltzer into it. So we take a second one. And break this one up. I put some more in that one. And some more in that one. Can we see what's happening? Can you see the bubbles coming up? Shut the tops down just in case, make sure they're safe. If you look, the bubbles are dissolving, they're coming up to the top and then they're going back down into the water. Once it gets to the top, once the bubble gets to the top and bursts, then the gas has gone and the colour goes back down again. It's the gas that's making them bubble. Now the ingredients in Alka-Seltzer combine with the water to form a gas called carbon dioxide. The oil and the Alka-Seltzer do not combine in this way. Alka-Seltzer tablets sink through the vegetable oil until they reach the layer of coloured water. There, the Alka-Seltzer dissolves in the water and forms a gas called carbon dioxide. The gas is lighter than the water and the oil, so it bubbles up, taking a bit of coloured water with it as it moves through the oil layer. You should have seen those bubbles looking like colourful blobs floating through the oil to the top, to the top of your jar. 
At the top, the bubbles should have burst, releasing the carbon dioxide gas, and then the colourful blobs should have sunk back down to the bottom, because now, without their carbon dioxide gas, they don't have any energy anymore. The effect should have been reminiscent of a lava lamp. The chemical reaction that causes the carbon dioxide to form happens more quickly in warm water. For this reason, you should have seen your Alka-Seltzer tablets dissolve quickly, like mine did, in the warm water, approximately 20, 30 seconds, I think it took. And this should have um, resulted in lots of rapid bubbles and an energetic lava lamp display. But in contrast, the poor old cold one, the Alka-Seltzer tablet in the cold water, that should have dissolved more slowly, most of it disappearing in the first two or three minutes, resulting in a calmer, longer lasting lava lamp effect. So those are our lava lamps and you can go on playing with those, put them into hot and cold water, keep putting different, see this blue ones. I like the blue ones better actually. I think the blue colour's nicer. I think we're getting more of a reaction in the blue one. So those are our lava lamps. And I'm going to cut back to Nicola now while we get our slime tray ready. What do you think of that? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, they were really, really good, Linda. They looked like a proper lava lamp, didn't they? <laughs> oh. Okay, so as Linda said, for the next one is going to be slime, making slime. So this sounds really good. Nicola, you're on mute, um, love. Oh, right. That's all right. Okay, hopefully that's unmuted me with any luck. Um, okay, so um, before we start, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about next week's LAL. So I'll just show you this. There we go. So next week's LAL is Runaway Food, and it's with uh, the artist Stephen Waterhouse. And he's going to be talking about his life as an author and an illustrator and he'll be reading from his fun picture book, The Runaway Chapati. And he'll show us how to draw our very own characters. So it sounds really, really good for Libraries Adventures Live next Tuesday, the 16th of March. And it's 11 o'clock in the morning. So I really hope you can join us then for next week's LAL. OK, so put that back. Right then, hopefully Linda's just about ready for us. So I'll just hand over to Linda and we'll start making some slime. <laughs> right, here we are again, back with the tray. Um, can I just, let me just do this, see. Can I just bring Nicola back in? Nicola, my headphones went a bit funny. Did you hear the whole of the last experiment? Yes. Loud oh, and clear. good, good. That's <laughs> all right then. Because I was I was trying to tell you that you were on mute and I don't think you were. I think it was my headphones. Right. So here we are again with another tray. This one is going to make some slime. Slime's quite a trendy thing, isn't it? Everybody seems to like slime. So let's unpack our tray and see what we've got. Now, you've got to make sure you've got a clean work surface. I'm going to use these trays because you need a, a kitchen counter or something that this my tray has got an edge so that's okay but if you're doing it in the kitchen you need a kitchen counter because we do need to tip it out and it does get a bit messy but then it wouldn't be any fun if it wasn't messy would it i'm going to have pink slime I haven't used the pink one for a while okay so what do we need first of all we need our mixing bowl well it, this this chemical reaction again like the rockets that we're going to do next we've got to be patient because we've got to wait for the chemical reaction to take place so first of all in a mixing bowl we need half a cup of water now half a cup is 118 milliliters or four fluid ounces so that's if you i think if you're american you use cups and my recipe was american so that's a cup of water but i've translated it for you to 118 milliliters which is my water in there so i'll wait for you to measure out your water if you've got the cups or you're measuring cups, that's fine. If not, we need to get 118 millilitres or four fluid ounces of water. Into that, we need to put the same amount, half a cup, 118 millilitres, four, four fluid ounces of this lovely gloopy stuff. 
which is PVA glue. I'll wait for you to get your, oh, this way around, <laughs> I'll wait for you to get your PVA glue ready. Um, but it's just PVA children's glue like this. So we'll just drip all that in there. And I've got a little spatula here to get all of my glue out and into my bowl. Ooh, lovely. Gloopy, gloopy glue. Ooh. Okie dokie. So the next thing we need to do is add half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now, remember we used the baking soda before. It's bicarbonate of soda. We used that before when we were going to make our volcanoes. But I'm not going to use a spoon this time. I'm going to use a little measuring spoon. So we need approximately half a teaspoon of our bicarbonate of soda. So we'll just take the top off to make sure it's the right amount, like that. And we'll put that into our liquid. Now... We're going to give this a good mix up. Let's give this a good stir to start with. Hope you've got your best stirring arms going. Because there's lots of stirring to this one. It's best in a big bowl so that it doesn't jump out. If you have a smaller bowl, it might jump out while you're stirring. So when we've got the water and the glue mixed together with our baking soda, can you see now we're all mixed up? The next thing we need to add is our contact lens solution. So, two tablespoons of contact lens solution. So, I'll look through my measuring spoons and we need two tablespoons. So, this is, this is can you see that? That's the biggest one, a tablespoon. And we need two of those. That's one. Oops. These silly tops keep falling off into my experiment. Two tablespoons. Okay. And then we need to start stirring. And stir a bit faster. A bit faster. A bit faster. Got to stir vigorously. Stir quickly. Brr. Keep stirring. Put your fast stirring arms going. Oh, keep stirring, keep stirring. It's going thicker. Oh, it's getting thicker. I'm gonna have to change my grasp on my spoon. Keep stirring. Oh, keep stirring. Can you see what's happening? Can you see what's happening? Look at this. Can you see how gloop it's going? And it's pulling away from the bottom of the bowl. Can you see? Keep stirring, keep stirring. Vigorous, vigorous stirring. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me, look what's happened. Look what's happened. It's gone all gloopy. Keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring. It's turned into a monster. Do you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my food colouring in. I want my food colouring in. I want pink. I'm going to put my food colouring in. And stir again. Woohoo! Stir, 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 stir. Oh no, it's escaping onto my tray. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is, remember I said you need... Oh, stir, 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 stir. Still isn't sticky enough. Oh, my goodness me. I think you might have to get your mum to have a go at this. My arm's aching. Now, we're going to tip it out onto the tray. Going to start stirring it. 
mixing it all up I'm going to start kneading it and stirring it round oh this is great fun keep stirring keep kneading oops not camera Let's get it all together. <laughs> we need to mix it up until it starts to form a ball. Gosh, this is a lot of mixing and kneading, isn't it? Lots of stirring. Ooh, it's escaping. I did say it was a bit messy this one. It's not fun unless it's messy, is it? Look at my floppity slime now. And the more you play with it, <laughs> the more it goes yummy. Let's pick up some bits from my tray. See if I can pick it up yet. Can I pick it up yet? Yeah. Keep kneading. Keep moving it round. Keep our chemical reaction going. Keep stretching. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> it feels great. It reminds me of when we, when my, when my children were little, and we used to have corn flour and water, and we used to put that on a tray, and that has a lovely feel as well. So it's lovely for children, and it's lovely for little toddlers to play with corn flour and water because if you have corn flour and water, it's perfectly safe, and children love it because it feels so nice and gloopy on your fingers. This, this reaction is taking a long time to work. It's still very sticky. We're getting better. The more you need it, the more you play with it. The stickier it goes. So now we can drop our slime. Eww. Lovely. Yeah, that's it. It's okay now because it's sticking to itself. Now, if you wanted to do this experiment again, but with different ways, you could do different things. Instead of using the water, I'm just going to put mine back on the tray. Ooh, that's lovely. <laughs> I love the feel of it. Instead of putting, um, instead of using water, if you use this stuff, if you use shaving foam, it will make your um, slime much fluffier. If the older children are watching, they could put things like iron filings into it and then you'd have magnetic slime and you could do all sorts of things with it. So slime's very, very interesting. Now, because we're not, because we've got so many experiments today, I want to put this onto one side so that I can play with it again later. So you can either get some of these bags, which have little zippers on the top, resealable bags. I'm going to put mine in one of these food containers so that I can play with it later. So we'll just scoop it all up, put it in there. And now it's starting to come together. It's easier to work with. Try using different ingredients. Try using more or less contact lens solution. Try using more or less colours and you could put glitter into it. You can do all sorts because that's your slime. It's lovely. So we're going to put that on one side and I think we're going to get ready for the next experiment. Back to Nicola. Okay. Oh, thanks, Linda. That looks absolutely brilliant slime. Excellent. 
Okay, uh, right. So we've got one more experiment for us today, and this is on a video, um, and it's rockets. Okay, so I'll go to show the video for the rockets. Um, I'll just share my screen in a minute. And right now the next thing we're going to make i want to put it back on i've still got a slime all over my hands nicola um right put it back onto there okay now the next experiment is the exciting bit from outside um but before we do that i'm just going to go through now i've got this slime off my hands that's why i went to nicola to get the slime off my hands um we're just going to talk about what 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 we've done with the slime what did we do with the slime what happened so um glue is made of long skinny chain like molecules called polymers these molecules can slip and slide around in each other and that's why the glue is very runny and very easy to get out of its container because it's slider. When you mix a chemical called borax with the glue, it causes links to form between the polymer chains. And this process is called cross-linking. Once cross-links form, it becomes harder for the polymers to slide over each other, making the glue thicker and creating the slime. That's why it ends up like this. In this project, we used contact lens solution. That's this stuff. We used contact lens solution um, instead of using borax as one of the ingredients. Contact lens solution contains other chemicals called boric acid and sodium borate. And when you mix the baking soda with these chemicals, they react to, prefer, to pr produce borax. Now I did say, try changing one of the ingredients of a slime recipe. For example, you could use more or less contact lens solution and how do the properties of the slime change? Or you could make fluffy slime using three cups of foam shaving cream instead of the water. So three cups would be quite a lot more, wouldn't it? We used half a cup of water so if you're going to use three cups, you're going to need quite a lot of shaving foam. But that would make a, a big fluffier slime, perhaps. Now, it's very important when you get your contact lens solution that you go and look on the back of it to make sure that it has got the boric acid and the sodium borate, because those two together make the borax, which when combined with our PVA glue and our baking soda, reacts to form the slime so remember to check your ingredients on there and borax is something that was uh, that's always been used in um in laundry products we use it for cleaning so it's in contact lens solution because it cleans our contact lenses so that's the science behind that one and i'm just going to talk a little bit about alka seltzers before um before we move on my nice messy tray um, so Alka-Seltzer is a medical drug. Um, it's used as a pain reliever and an antacid. Um, we use it for neutralising stomach acid and for heartburn. The pain reliever used is aspirin and antacid used, and the antacid, sorry, used is baking soda. Uh, that's the sodium bicarbonate again. That's the stuff that we've been using all morning in one form or another. To take the tablets, they have to be fully dissolved in water. And the tablet dissolves, the sodium bicarbonate splits apart to form sodium and bicarbonate. The bicarbonate reacts with the hydrogen from the citric acid, allowing the other ingredients to form carbon dioxide gas. And then the bubbles are made. Now, if we get bubbles from, um, from our Alka-Seltzer, remember we've got it in our lava lamps. So if we have bubbles, let's just see if I can... I'm going to be sorry I did this, but I'm going to try anyway. Oops. <laughs> there, now you can see me better. I can talk to you now, you see. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we used the Alka-Seltzer before. We're going to use Alka-Seltzer again, but this time we're going to make some ghost rockets. Now, after um, the ghost rockets were filmed outside, 
and I did them at weekend uh, with, with my uh, partner because they, they, you can't do it inside or you'd be having uh, dents in your ceiling. So on the video, we talk about the canisters and I talk about putting a face on the canister to make it into a ghost rocket. But you can't actually see that because it's a blue felt pen in the video and it doesn't show the face. So I've done this one so that you can see the face on my ghost rocket. And it's called a ghost rocket because we use this stuff, corn flour, in the canister before we set it off. Now, if you have corn flour, well, I've gone and put that glue in there, never mind. Let's have a different container. If you put corn flour and water together, just a little bit of water, and give it a stir, it makes a it makes a lovely gooey sort of mixture. And if you try pouring it over your fingers, I'm going to hold it over my tray. If you pour it over your fingers, it kind of runs away and feels all kind of chalky. Now, if we put that into our canister before we set our ghost rocket off, when we sit him on the floor outside and he goes up into the air, it leaves behind the glue, the gooey corn flour. Can you see the gooey corn flour on my fingers? It leaves this behind on the floor. So it looks like the ectoplasm that the rocket has left. So that's why we put the corn flour into the canisters before we send them off. And the only other thing before we run the video is in the video, I say hot water and cold water. But the water that I was using at the end of the experiment wasn't hot. It had been on the table in the um, in the kettle for quite a while. So it was warm water, not hot water. I'm not um, suggesting that you have boiling water in these things. It has to be warm water, not hot. I think that just about covers everything. So um, are we OK now, Nicola, to to run the video for our last experiment, which is ghost rockets. This is the part of the experiments, today's experiments, which, which we're going to look at, ghost rockets. Have you enjoyed watching something lift off into the air, like fireworks at a show or a spacecraft launch? It can be an exciting experience. It's thrilling to see something lift off against Earth's gravity. To launch a spacecraft, its rockets give it a strong push that is due to a chemical reaction. This means that every time you see a space rocket launch off into the sky, you're watching chemistry at work. In this activity that we're going to do now, you can get to blast off an object into the air. That's why we're outside, that's why it's a video and not like it was before in my kitchen. We're going to investigate how to mix these ingredients to get the best lift off and then you can give your friends and family a homemade gravity defying show. Now because we're going to be blasting things off into the air we have to think about our safety. So I've got here two pairs of safety glasses. These are children's safety glasses and these are for grown-ups, grown-up safety glasses. I'm not going to wear them while I'm doing the experiment because I've already got my glasses on. But what do you think might happen if we had one of these canisters going off into the air? And I was watching it like this. What do you think might happen? You're right, it would go straight up into your eyes and you'd be very poorly. So we've got to think about safety in this one. This is explosions, this has got to be safety. So we always stand back, we have an adult with us to think about our safety and we really need to wear our safety glasses. The other thing I will say about this experiment is we have to be patient. What we're going to do is we're going to look at how different chemical reactions work differently. So I'm going to take my measuring jug, my conical flask, this is called. I'm going to get my Alka-Seltzer. Remember the Alka-Seltzer we used before when we made the lava lamps? This is the fizzy stuff. I'm going to take one of these and I'm just going to break a little bit off it like we did before. 
I'm going to put it into my conical flask and I'm going to add some cold water. Can you see it fizzing? You see the bubbles coming up? Those bubbles that are in there are causing energy and as the tablet dissolves that energy is escaping from the bubbles and it's going out into the air. It can come out of our canical flask because it doesn't have a top on. But what do you think might happen if we put some water and one of our fizzing tablets, one of our alka seltzers, into a canister with a top on? What do you think might happen then? I think it might trap those little bubbles. What do you think might happen to the air if it, if it gets trapped? It can't escape through there, it's trapped in here. So sooner or later, something's got to go. Pop. If we put a tiny bit of Alka-Seltzer into our container and some water, do you think that would make a bigger explosion than if we put a lot of the Alka-Seltzer into the water? How much water do you think we need to put into the container? We've got to leave some air above for the, for the tablet to fizz and the, the bubbles to fizz and the, the pressure to build up before the top will pop. That's how the thing works. Because they're ghost rockets, we're going to have a bit of fun first. So you need a, a felt pen. You need to turn your canister upside down. So that's the bottom. Turn it upside down. We're going to draw some eyes on him. You might not be able to see this because it's blue, but I couldn't find my black pen. We're going to have a nose. But we're not going to have anything else, just a ghostly character. We also need for this experiment some baking soda. Cornstarch. Cornstarch, not baking soda, cornstarch. I haven't got any cornstarch, so today I'm going to use some custard powder because it's the same thing. I'm going to put just a little bit of custard powder into my rocket my little ghost. I'm going to put some water. I think I'll fill it about halfway up. I'm going to break just a small piece of alka seltzer and I'm going to put it in. Then I'm going to put my firmly on the top like that. And I can see that it's starting to freeze already. I'm going to turn you upside down. And then I'm going to stand really well back to make sure that I'm not leaning over him when he starts to go pop. Did you get it? Well that didn't go very far did it? I wonder what we might have to adjust. We had our water almost to the top. There wasn't much room for it to fizz so it couldn't have much energy could it? Perhaps if we only put a little bit of water in we might end up with more fizz. Should we try that? We'll put just a little bit of water in this time. That should give loads of bubbles. We'll put some more alka seltzer in. Put the top on, make sure it's on tight. Do you think it will take a long time for the bubbles to get ready? Or do you think it might go off quicker this time? Let's see how long it takes.
one went right up onto the roof and then came back down again. So which do you think would be best? Lots of water, a little bit of water, lots of Alka-Seltzer, a little bit of Alka-Seltzer. You'll be able to practice with those. Remember I said about cold water and hot water, do you think it might go up faster if it has hot water or cold water? Would the chemical reaction be quicker or slower when it's cold or when it's warm? Should we try one with some hot water and see how fast that goes up? I'll have to get another canister. I don't know what happened to that one. It's on the floor somewhere. Let's try with... What did we have? A lot of water or a little bit of water last time? Not a lot of water, so that we've got plenty of space for the alka salxa to form the power, to form the launch, to get our rocket up there. Let's put some hot water in this time. Put some alka salxa in. Remember to put the top on fast. Hold it down tight. Oh! <laughs> I think that was a bit quick. So do we think hot water or cold water? I think I'm going to try some hot water for the next one. Don't forget to have lots of fun making your own rockets at home. a real giggle wasn't it oh dear so bring Nicola back in as well hi Nicola hi yeah <laughs> that was brilliant thank you so much for all your experiments Linda and I hope everyone at home has, has really enjoyed watching them as well I um, loved it you. just just remember yeah. remember when the rocket where you if you're going to work if you're going to be working with the rockets please remember to stand well back and you have to be very patient. Sometimes you think, oh, it's not going to work. And remember when it gets to bonfire night, they say never return to a firework. So just wait and be patient. It will go off and it will make you jump. So don't, don't go standing over them because that would be dangerous. You saw how fast they went up. Um, and always remember to do it outside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been playing with my slime as well to make it a bit more slimy while we're watching the video. So. It's going to take me ages to clean up my, my dining room. <laughs> yeah, uh, just before we go, um, there's just if you want more information about British Science Week, that's the website again, uh, BritishScienceWeek.org. Okay, right then. So thanks very much for watching this morning and um, have a lovely day. Okay, bye everyone. Have fun with your experiments. Bye. Happy Science Week. Happy Science bye, Week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>